welcome to the Authentic and Thriving Academy, where we help you design a life and business that sets you apart. And today I'm really excited about this training today. Joining me live is Rosalind Santos. She is a meditation guide, an energy healer, Reiki master, and she has so much energy, uh, energy and information to share with you today. <laughs> and tonight we're specifically going to be talking about how energy can help you with anxiety and depression and pushing through that stuff that's holding you back so that you can take your business and life to the next level. So Rosalind, I'm gonna let you just take it from here. I'm gonna get off the line. I'm gonna be taking notes for the group. And then um, when you're done with your presentation, we'll meet up again. And um, okay, I'll ask some questions. Okay. I'll let you introduce yourself, and then also um, the other thing I wanted to add was that if you are watching, um, make sure to grab a journal before we get started. Grab your journal, something to write with, and then just be present. Um, there's so much great information in today's training that you won't want to really you won't want your energy to leave the room make sure to just stay really focused because you'll get a lot out of it. So Rosalind, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and take it from here. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Jenna. And thank you to everyone who's on the call and to all of those um, who will be watching on the replay. Um, I am so happy to, to have this opportunity to talk about the different concepts that have changed my life. I know some of you have seen, um, my interviews with Jenna before, but I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth um, with uh, the concepts that I teach my coaching clients. So we're going to be going over some really great enlightening information. Um, Jenna had a really great introduction. <laughs> so my background, um, for those of you who, who haven't, um, who I haven't met or spoken with in person, my background is in nursing. I've been a registered nurse for 18 years. And as a result of my own healing journey, I, um, I'm now teaching meditation to my clients. Um, I'm an energy healer. And over the course of the time that I started doing energy healing sessions, then I ended up becoming an energy coach because of what people really wanted to know of how I myself have dealt with um, depression, anxiety, and PTSD. And then a lot more kind of just evolved from there. And so it's kind of where I'm at now um, with my clients. I, I teach kids and adults alike and for a variety of different um, issues. So without further ado, I actually do have a PowerPoint. So let me go ahead and share this. Okay. All right, so understanding your energy. And, okay, there we are. So, we all believe in energy. Okay, so I have the examples here of if you've ever um, taken your temperature, your child's temperature, you believe in thermal energy. If you've ever walked into a room, turned the lights on, expected for the light bulbs to work, you believe in electrical energy. Now our physical bodies actually have a resonant vibrational frequency too. There's a range, I believe it's anywhere like in the 60s to 100s um, measured in hertz, but it's just not something that is typically checked when you go to the doctor like your blood pressure or heart rate, at least not at this point in time. So um, one of the things that it's important for you to know is that we have our physical body. So our physical body is what we can sense. So touch, taste, hear, feel, see. And we have our energy body, which is comprised of our thoughts, emotions, um, our ideas, and our consciousness. And so they're really like two halves to a whole. And so we tend to just kind of think in the physical, but what we're going to be diving into today is thinking more in terms of the energy body. And what I always tell my clients, and you'll hear me say this repeatedly, is that we are infinite energetic beings. And um, 
one of the things that we've learned from quantum physics is that if we take a microscope and put it in through our hand and look into like the skin, um, the tissues, and um, the cells, the DNA, and then the atom, and I have a picture here on the PowerPoint of an atom. It's not the best one that I wanted to find, but this will do. Um, if you remember this from school, the atom is one of the smallest constituents of matter. Now, quantum physics even goes, you know, subatomic and smaller than that. But for the sake of what we're learning today, we'll just take a look at the atom. And you see in the nucleus that there is the proton, the neutrons, and that comprises the nucleus, and around it are electrons. Now, typically, these would be termed like electron clouds, and they're the ones that that move, okay? Now, in between all of this, though, what they have found is that it's mostly just empty space. So 99.999, and just keep going on, is just empty space. And if we were to take all the empty space out of the atoms, what's left is the particulate matter, so the protons, neutrons, electrons. If all of that was gathered from our bodies, each of our individual individual bodies would actually fit into a grain of sand, which I know is kind of hard to kind of wrap your mind around, but we're gonna be expounding upon this a little bit more. But that's pretty astonishing. I mean, essentially we're pretty much holographic. Now in this space, I mentioned that the electrons move and in the picture, it looks kind of orbital, but in reality, the electrons move um, in, in waves. So if you think of like fish in the sea or birds in the sky, they move in waves and that's vibration. And that's exactly what's happening. Everything replicates in nature, which I think is the coolest thing. But in an atom then, those electrons move in waves. That's vibration. That is essentially energy. So energy then is really the motivating or driving force for anything to take place because everything is made of atoms. And I say that we're infinite, okay? We have infinite possibilities, we're infinite energetic beings. And according to the law of conservation of energy, it states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it's only transformed or transferred. So that's the reason why that I say that we're infinite. And we're gonna expound upon this a little bit more because you're going to be able to see exactly how powerful we really are. So taking it a step further, since we are energetic beings, that also means then that our thoughts and our feelings are also energetic. Now our thoughts are electric, our feelings are magnetic. And this is something that I want you to remember when we get into the meditation. And this is essentially how you create your reality. So for those who are interested in energy and business, this is something that you're really going to want to remember. And as depicted in the picture here, what you believe and the feelings that you have about your beliefs is what really drives your behaviors and your actions. Okay, and that's, you'll see how all of this is going to develop upon one another another so now i hope okay great good so the next thing when it comes to um quantum physics as far as another concept that we're going to add to this is that of quantum entanglement and entrainment because each person or thing has their own energy field or aura their own vibrational frequency and the energy field of one thing or person can affect that of another. That's entanglement. Entrainment means that they sync up. So I'm hoping that this is gonna play. Perfect. This is the, um, this I got off YouTube. As you can see, oh, it's really noisy. <laughs> you can really hear it. So you'll see that the metronomes all started at different um, times. You do absolutely nothing and they will sync up. Which I think is just so cool. 
because this is a demonstration then of that's the demonstration then of how energy healing actually works. You see how fast that was. It's pretty amazing when I'm doing an energy healing session on someone, sometimes I could just hold my hand to kind of hover over a place on their body and immediately they're actually going to start to feel something. So um, that is what happens then with vibration because things will sync up to the highest vibrating thing, typically. Okay, and especially if that, that's your intent and your focus, which it is in an energy healing session. So this is something that I also want you to remember, because especially for those who are interested in energy and business, that is something that you want to remember is that your energy is contagious. Oops. Okay. I wonder. Hold on. Okay, go on to the next slide. Let's try this. Okay, perfect. So now that we kind of talked a little bit about the energy principles, what I wanted to dive into is the mind-body connection. Okay, so we're again we're develop we're developing the concepts here. Now each person on average, I know what you're already going to say, you're going to say, I think way more thoughts than that, but the average person has 60,000 thoughts per day. 90 to 95% of that is the same as the day before, and 80 to 85% of those are negative, which is huge. I mean, we're talking 48,000 to 51,000 thoughts per day that are negative. Now, granted, this is probably taken for people who really aren't doing much like self-development, probably not as aware, but it's still a very, very, very high in number. And what's the big deal with this then? Um, well, let's first talk about stress on the body because typically we experience three kinds of stress. Injury being one, uh, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. We also have our environment, so chemicals, pollution, viruses, bacteria, anything that we're exposed to where our body is going to be like responding to that, okay? Anything that we consume, even certain foods could be a trigger for certain people. But the third thing that stresses us out are our thoughts. And our, we take our, our brains with us, our minds with us 24-7. So... Out of these three, and the thing is most of us, you know, can at any time even be affected by more than one or maybe all three at one time, can be a real stress on the body. So taking those numbers then into consideration, we're going to talk about what happens here. Uh, talk about having, you know, those 80 to 85% of those similar, similar thoughts, you know, being negative. Because the thing is, I know we would like to think that we have neutral thoughts, but we don't. You know, we could say, well, the sky is blue today. But then you might start thinking, well, I don't really like that shade of blue. Or I, you know, I think that that's probably a different kind of blue than what this person's saying that it is. Or no, I actually see purple, you know, and it, it could cascade into next thing you know, you have an opinion or a judgment on something. And so we would like to think we have neutral thoughts, but our body will actually tell us otherwise. Because every time we have a thought, our brain's going to release either chemicals of stress or the feel-good chemicals within our bodies. And so the feel-good chemicals include things like oxytocin, which is considered the love hormone, dopamine, serotonin, opiates, endocannabinoids, and yes, it's exactly how it sounds. Um, certain breathing exercises can actually make you have a little bit of a euphoria or make you feel a little bit high. But we have all of these feel-good chemicals in our bodies that can be released um, depending on the situation, depending on the thoughts that we have, or if we try to elicit them in some way. And we also have stress chemicals, adrenaline, norepinephrine, cortisol, um, those are, those are basically the big three. And I just find it really interesting how there's three of those and there's so many more of the feel good chemicals, yet we're releasing so many more of the stress chemicals throughout the day. Okay. Now by simple math, as we talked about the number of those negative 
thought, we release so much stress chemicals every day. So even at a low grade, it's not like something major has to happen all the time, but like we get up in the morning, we're checking our phone, we get into traffic, we're running late. I mean, even like on a low level, we're releasing stress chemicals and like the thoughts about the things that we're experiencing. I'm late, this is gonna happen, and it's just a whole cascade of things that occur. Now what happens then is our cells have to adapt to the influx of the stress hormones and over time, they change their structure to accommodate them. So if you take a look at the illustration where there's that blue cell and it has those like Y looking like receptors, okay? So let's say your cell has like a set number, just a normal healthy working cell has a set number. If it has way too many uh, of the neurotransmitters or hormones that it has to pick up and not enough receptors, it's going to have to adjust. So like think of yourself as like someone who has to catch like 20 balloons all of a sudden. And you know, and you have to grow extra arms in order to, to get them all before they hit the ground and pop. It's kind of the same thing then with our cells. They have to accommodate for this because then otherwise we're gonna have way too many within our systems and the cell's job is to transport them to the rest of the body, to the rest of the organs in the body. And so think about this. If the cell's ability to function normally is interrupted, what's going to happen over years, over decades? What's going to happen to your immune system? You know, you will eventually get more colds, you'll get sick. And um, let's say you had genes like your, your father has high blood pressure or diabetes or your mom, you know, has some other condition. Next thing you know, you know, you're in your 30s or your 40s and you're starting to have the same things. It's really not so much the genes, okay? Genes do not cause disease and researchers gave this up decades ago. People are still kind of caught on the idea that genes are the problem. They really are not, they're just a switch. And it's actually called either upregulating or downregulating of genes. And so if you upregulate, you downregulate, you can switch those genes off and on to actually express themselves. And now you have the chronic condition that was like in your family history. And what we're, we're actually seeing a lot more now are people coming down with things that were never in their family history, or it's just everything's autoimmune, right? You hear so much of that. And there's a reason why this is happening. And again, it goes back to the stresses on our bodies. So one of the caveats that I wanna to say to this is understanding then that this is the physiological process, the power of our thoughts and our feelings when this happens. This is not meant to beat yourself up over having a negative thought or feeling. I don't want you to leave this training and be like, oh my gosh, I had this terrible thought and now I'm gonna have a heart attack. It's, that's not how it's going to work. Um, in fact, I'm actually an, a, very much an advocate for fully feeling because life, right? Things are going to happen and we are going to experience things that are not so great, not so happy. But that's also the reason why I teach meditation and other energy and reframing techniques. Um, so that way you can process through things um, as you're healing through older wounds in order to be able to change your energy and to change how you're moving forward. Okay, so understanding the mind-body connection is really meant to empower you because once you start to learn how you can choose the thoughts that you have, you have the ability to change your biology. And this is what even my clients are starting to experience. It's not so much my story anymore, but now I'm beginning to see changes in other people. And it's, it's absolutely incredible. If we have time, I'll share an, an example or two. All right, so this is the part that um, we're gonna focus on a little bit here because um, there were most of the votes um, for what people wanted to, to hear and learn about is with anxiety and depression. So let's go through an example. Let's say you know someone who's considered like the negative Nelly, 
like the person who just wakes up on the wrong side of the bed all the time. And let's say one day this person actually has a really great morning or they're starting off the day and they're actually feeling like pretty good. Then all of a sudden they check Facebook and they don't agree with something that was posted or they have a run in with like a coworker that they don't like. What typically happens? What do you see happens? Or maybe this has happened to you. You know, you just eventually end up going back to how you were complaining, blaming, screaming, you know, um, whatever the case may be. Right. But there is actually a physiological thing that is happening here. And so remember how we talked about the cells change to accommodate for the influx of all the stress hormones. So what happens then is that because the person, or maybe it was you, ends up having more positive feelings, they're releasing the feel-good hormones, and they're not matching up to the receptors that the cells have anymore. So the body cells are literally screaming for the stress hormones because they're saying, I'm going to die if I don't have these stress hormones. And so the person will actually end up looking for things to stress them out to release those hormones. And so even though we know that we have a choice to respond the way that we want to, physiologically, it's just really, really hard to break. And this is the reason why bad habits, you know, different negative thoughts that we have, they're very, very hard to break for this exact reason. And it's emotional addiction. It's just as strong as an addiction as any other drug, vice, anything else. Okay. And so I just, you know, this is when it comes to anxiety and depression, a lot of it is exactly this. And once you understand this, then you understand, you truly understand the power of your thoughts. It's not just, oh, just think positive and everything is going to be great. There's a reason why your nervous system is conditioned to this because of the neurotransmitters that have been emitted for so long. Okay, but that's what we're going to talk about. What I used to help with the depression and the anxiety and the PTSD. And so I just have a note here too at the very bottom of this particular slide that in over 60 years in the medical literature, there is nothing that states that there's a serotonin imbalance when it comes to depression. And so you know the SSRIs, the serotonin, um, I forgot what the other word was, uptake inhibitors, SSRIs is one cat particular category of antidepressants. Man, all, all the placebo studies that are done show that the placebos work just as well as the actual medication. And I don't know if any of you have ever taken antidepressants before. I have several of them. And after, you know, after a very short period of time, they would stop working. And that's why I tried several. And even my husband would notice. So, um, yeah, so it's just, you know, just an FYI on that, you know. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that medication doesn't have its place, but I just want you to understand that you know, if you if this has been your experience, you're not alone, and there's a reason. There's a reason why um, it might not be working. There's a reason why you know there are lots of other different avenues out there for you to deal with anxiety and depression. And so um, I've already been kind of filling in little bits here with my own story, but this is the reason why I do what I do. Um, I have the history of the depression, panic attacks, PTSD, I was suicidal, hospitalized for it. And so in the middle of it all, a psychologist said, you need to learn mindfulness and meditation. She gave me this book to read that was for therapists and I started to do the exercises. She never meditated with me, so I kind of went off on my own and did a short like 10 minute. And it took two weeks when I started to notice that there was a difference. And then I started to do more research into the neuroscience of what people were using meditation for. And then um, I decided after kind of going back and forth with meditation, because I understand it's not hard in the beginning, or I'm sorry, it's not easy in the beginning to do it, but I realized when I wasn't doing it, that I felt bad again. And so I decided to really dedicate myself to a daily practice 
five to six months. I would say five to six months because I can explicitly remember it was towards the end of the year where I was like sitting on my big chair with my husband at home and I was like, wow, like I just feel really, really good. Like I feel like just inward, like this inward happiness, nothing had to make me happy in that moment. It was like this feeling of like just feeling completely whole and just feeling completely good. And, um, and I just, I realized I didn't need to be complimented. I didn't need validation. I didn't need anything external. And I just remember feel like this was the first time I ever felt this way in my life. And, um, and I'll never forget that moment because it was so striking. And it was several months after that where he was like, you know, I think I want to meditate too. So, <laughs> so your positivity, your positive energy is contagious. Okay. And so, um, so meditation, and just to let you know, I mean, if you, if you work with any um, spiritual teachers, energy workers, energy healers, a lot of them, most of them, I should say, most of them will, will employ the use of meditation um, in their work, either for themselves or with you. And so with meditation, when you're feeling low or experiencing an illness, that means your vibration has lowered. It's already been confirmed that all disease or dis-ease is lowering your vibrational frequency. That basically means that your energy is just incoherent at that time. So think of coherence as like you tune into a one station on the radio and you have like this crisp, clear song coming through very nicely versus like you're kind of in between stations or let's say you have like, you know, multiple like songs on at the same time and it's just noise. Okay. So that's like coherence and incoherence, just, just noise. And meditation, it's time tested, clinically proven to make your energy coherent. I always say meditation is like probably the only time during the day that you will ever be able to unify your energy all for yourself for however long you decide to meditate. And so increased coherency will lead to less of anxiety, no more depressive symptoms. And this is evidence-based, by the way. You know, um, I have a slide here of the CAT scan. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people's CAT scans have been done before and after meditation. So as you can see on the left, lots of brain activity after meditation, very calm, very calm looking scan. Okay. Again, feel happier, more whole. You're more patient and allowing because you're more happier and you feel more whole. Less pain, physical healing in miraculous ways. Okay. I'll, I'll give the example of a couple of my, my clients here after we're done um, meditating. But I mean, there's, if you were to just look, look it up too on the internet, man, people have had some really, really remarkable things physically. Um, as a result of meditating. Multiple structural changes in the brain. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them, but like the right and left sides of your brain are going to work more cohesively together. The stress center, the amygdala is going to get smaller. Um, we don't need it to be as big as it, as it was when we used to, when humans used to live in the wild, when they would be chased by wild animals. Okay. We don't need that anymore. Okay. So that gets smaller. And you actually grow more gray matter. You, your brain literally grows. Hello, you can be more smarter <laughs> if you want to. That's called neuroplasticity. Um, and you can, um, your concentration, memory, all of that will be improved. Okay. Lots of studies being done on people with Alzheimer's, early onset Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay. Can actually help prevent those things, by the way. Right. So this is one of the few things in life where there's no downside. And so let's go ahead and we're going to do a meditation together. And um, this is going to be a different kind of meditation because I'm going to employ some energy techniques in here. So I'm going to take you through a visualization where we're going to ground to the energy of the earth. Okay. And then we're going to connect to universal energy or cosmic energy that's gonna pass through our bodies. So I'm gonna guide you through where the energy centers are, the chakra centers, if you're familiar with those. Um, so we're going to have the energy pass behind and in front of them. And then I'm gonna take you to a heart opener and then we'll end there. Okay, so 
do re it's not going to be super long if you haven't meditated before um don't worry about it your energy body knows how to do this okay so go ahead and just go ahead and close your eyes okay take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. And just kind of feel your presence within your body. Feel the energy in front of your face. Feel your chest rise and fall as you breathe. Feel your presence in your legs. And as your feet, as they touch the floor, And bring your awareness to your hips. And at the base of your spine, imagine this ball of energy just kind of sitting right there, pulsating energy right at the base of your spine. And imagine from the base of your spine, a tree trunk going down into the earth. Again, trust your imagination. Remember your thoughts, your visualization is real. Imagine going down, down, down into the center of the earth. Very good. Now, imagine the tree trunk widening to the width of your body. Excellent. Feel how solidly anchored you are. And imagine that the bottoms of your feet open up and the energy of the earth comes through the bottoms of your feet into your legs. Feel its vibrant energy going up your legs, up to your hips. Very good. Nice deep breath in through your nose and out your mouth. Feel any pain within your body, tension in your body, go down into the grounding. Remember the earth has its own electromagnetic pole and it will transmute the energy for good. Good. And now I want you to bring your awareness above the center of your head, but go up. Go way up 300 feet, so taller than a super high roller coaster, until you almost feel like this warm white light. Very good. And have that white light go down through the top center of your head. And it's it's going to go down behind the back of your head, back of the throat, down the back of your spine, now the back of your heart area, back of your stomach, back of the pelvic area, down to that very bottom, the perineal area, and that white light's going to come up the front in front of the pelvic area, the stomach, 
heart, throat, forehead, and up the top of your head again, the crown area. And imagine like paint over a balloon that's gonna come down all sides of your energy field or your aura. White light going all the way down and around your body and have it tuck into that grounding. Feel how that white light just kind of washes over your energy field, cleaning out anything that doesn't belong. You are now connected above and below. Just feel for a moment as that energy is passing through your body. It has such a powerful healing effect. Nice deep breath in. Energy filling in your lungs, and as you exhale, energy goes out to the rest of your body. Very good. And now we're going to bring awareness to your heart center. Imagine that you're standing in front of your heart. Like you're looking at it, and you can actually see how there is this wall around your heart. This wall has been there to protect you for all the different things that you've been through in your life. What does it look like? What is it actually made of? Is, is it concrete? Is it stone? Is it like dirt or grass? Is it smooth? Is it spiky? Uneven? You can even touch it, see what it feels like to you. And looking at it, you know how you don't need this wall anymore. You don't need this barrier. So what we're going to do, we're going to take several breaths and with each breath, imagine that the wall is going to crack open. And for everyone, this is different. Whatever appears to you is perfect for you. So with each breath, imagine that crack getting bigger and maybe parts of the wall start to come down. So on the next breath, let's take a breath in. And as you exhale, imagine that wall just opening. And light is coming through some cracks in that wall. Very good. Nice deep breath in again. Let it out. Maybe some of that is starting to widen. Maybe for some of you, the crack has gone all the way around. Whatever shows up is perfect for you. Another breath in again. In and out. Imagine now some pieces are starting to fall away. 
much more light is coming through, so much brighter. And again, nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, more pieces are falling away. Feeling much more open, feeling weight starting to come off your heart. Another breath in and out. Imagine the rest of the pieces are falling away. If some are still there, it's okay. But I want you to focus now on that feeling of just genuine compassion for yourself, for everything that you've been through. And imagine that compassion radiating out throughout your home or wherever you are right now. Compassion, loving kindness. Just imagine that merging out, stretching your aura. Excellent. Other people will be able to feel this, which is pretty amazing. Nice deep breath in and out. See if you can extend this compassion out further, past your home, maybe through your neighborhood, maybe the city that you're in. Go ahead and take another breath and out. Thank yourself for opening your heart, for taking the time to connect. And bring your awareness back to your body and the environment. And go ahead and open your eyes. Okay, how did that feel? I know that was probably a little bit different than maybe one that you have done in the past. But um, as you can see, I did do some, a little bit of energy work in there in the beginning. Those are some energetic techniques. Um, now, just FYI, and I'm going to wrap this up here so we can get to some question and answers. What I typically have my clients do, um, especially if you haven't really done any meditations before, um, and again, this is taking into consideration those who have like really bad anxiety or depression, I will typically recommend a guided meditation. Um, just simply because it gives that monkey mind something to do. Um, this one, I remember hearing this one Buddhist monk say, you don't give the monkey a banana, you just give them a different activity. <laughs> so um, a guided meditation gives you something else to focus on until you kind of get used to what it feels like to be in that space where things feel really, really good and peaceful, where that 10 minutes feels like two minutes. Okay, um, I always recommend first thing in the morning, by the way, because of the brainwave states, you're closer to that of sleep earbuds, mask if you have one, and that's just to be able to um, eliminate any other like stimulation um, so that way nothing else is interfering, okay? And just be consistent. Um, for me, I started to feel a difference in two weeks. For my clients, um, it's been two weeks or less where they have actually felt quite different, um, which is amazing. And so just it pick something that you want to do. Um, if you wanted, if you wanted, um, I'll open this up to the group that's listening to this. 
There is a 10 minute body skin one that I personally created. My husband did the music for it, which is really cool. Um, if you want in that, send me your email. I can send it to you. That's one that I typically give to my clients. And, um, and just do it every day. Do it every day. Even if the meditation is not real, it doesn't feel like it was the best. You know what? You still healed layers. Trust me on that. So just be consistent, be patient. And I promise you the, the payoff, once you do it consistently, it's, you're just going to feel so good. Okay. Now, um, let's see here. Okay. So there's a lot of different things that people use meditation for. And um, I think this is the last slide that we have because we're, we're running low on time. Calm, stress relief, learning mindfulness, obviously. When you meditate, you learn how to become the observer of your thoughts. Um, physical healing, of course, and um, cultivating positive emotions. There's a lot of, um, even in the Buddhist tradition, you know, they have, they have secularized ones too, where um, just like how I talked about having compassion within your heart, you can practice having love and compassion for others, which is a really cool thing to do in a meditative state. And also manifestation. So um, this is something that I, I would love to, to do another training on in the future. <laughs> but people use meditation for manifestation too, simply because when you become pure consciousness, you tap into the infinite field of possibilities where the thing that you want will end up coming to you in the ways that you didn't even imagine. So um, I know that that's a little bit of a stretch if you haven't heard of that before, but it's actually quite remarkable. And then I mentioned um, here the author, podcast host, TEDx speaker, Tim Ferriss. He actually, um, in one of his books, he sent 11 questions to 140 people at the top of their fields. And he found that no matter what type of like industry that they were in, over 90% of them actually had a meditative mindfulness practice. So if that tells you something, you know, for people who are in business and want to be successful, this is one of the keys to their success. Okay. So questions. I will take questions. <laughs> okay, let's, let's see if I can change the screen here. Okay. Does anyone have questions? And I think I think I can open this here to take questions on here. Oh. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna bring bring Jenna back on. Okay. Hey, Roslyn, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And I made you the host now. So, okay. Be... There we are. <laughs> I, I turned the lights off so you can't see me. So, I'll just stop my video. It's okay. I can just. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> I'm monitoring comments. Thank you. I don't see any comments yet, um, but I did come up with a couple questions that I want to ask. Um, yeah. One, I want to just share my experience first. Um, I've meditated before and I've actually gone on a really long spell of not meditating because I'm trying to cram so much in my life and I've decided today that I'm turning that around. Um, yes, I said in the podcast too. So I, this time I'm going to do it and everyone in the group can keep me accountable. Um, today what I noticed was you used the word entanglement to talk about energy. And while you were leading that short meditation, I felt like my spine and my nervous system and like my physical my physical body was actually detangling. It was really interesting. My arms were sitting here, um, palm up on my lap, and they they were just twitching because 
I am carrying so much stress in my shoulders. I injured my shoulder over Thanksgiving and I haven't been the same since. And I just feel, you know, my shoulders rising up to my ears and I felt them mm-hmm. just twitching and letting go. So that was awesome. I loved it. I can imagine what consistent meditation for my shoulders and arms would do. Um, I also know, and I want maybe you to speak on this if you um, have some feedback, but I've also heard that different parts of our body control or are related to aspects in our life. Like our feet and our legs, they move us forward. So if you have an issue with your legs, you're maybe not moving forward in the direction that you would like. Um, and then what I've what I've known about the shoulders is the shoulders um, you you with your arms and your shoulders you bring things to you, um, and there's some relationships and the shoulders that might be resentment for people. Um, do you have any? Yeah. Any thoughts on that or maybe more resources to learn more? So, yes, actually, um, one of the books that I actually consult with a lot, um, and I don't even know if they, if they're making more of them right now or have them, but you can also use the app. Louise Hayes, um, um, hold on, it's a, let me, let me look at it on my phone. Heal your body, heal your body A to Z. And it gives a lot of the metaphysical reasons for different things that happen. And it's it's actually quite comprehensive. And so, so yes, so feet, um, legs, hips, a lot of that does need especially have a lot to do with, with moving forward. Um, stubbornness too like ankles and knees, if there's, if there's stubbornness, shoulders, I know is also, um, feeling burdened and, um, and depending on the side, you know, right side, I believe is masculine and I, it might be either that must masculine, feminine, left side. So, so like, so mother, father, um, so there's, there's definitely, there's definitely um, some validity because the thing is I have seen with my clients a lot of consistency. So when it comes to either the energy centers, the chakra centers, which um, I can't remember if I told you, the, the energy centers, because this could be a whole other training too, is they correspond to, to the neuroendocrine system. So different neuroendocrine glands. And they're each like their mini brain because they control so many things in our body. So it's the same thing in those particular areas. It's like if I can feel something there, if they if they may or may not have a physical issue, I still kind of get an idea of like some things that they have probably dealt with. And usually, you know, I get the validation after they say, well, yeah, this is what happened. This is what I went through. And even with different parts of the body, um, there was one woman who one, one client I had where I had my hand like over her upper chest and neck and I felt like my hand was just being squeezed. And, um, and I asked her, cause she was like, she was like, I don't really have anything there. And I said, are you having a lot of anger and resentment? You know? And she was just like, she just kind of like let out this sigh and was like, Yes. And she actually had, um, this was an optometrist too. It was so strange. She didn't even tell me she was a doctor until I was done. <laughs> she she um, said, you know, I have had like halitosis. I've had bad breath for five years, had all kinds of things done. It's not, you know, no, nothing. They can't find anything. And when I, when I told her, you know, that, she, you know, I asked her, um, about anger and resentment. She was like, yeah. And I said, that might have something to do with it, you know? And she told me, like, she texted me later on. She's like, I think that you're right. <laughs> she's like, I think that you're right about my problem. <laughs> and, so, and so she, and she was telling me, she was like, I get mad super easily. She goes, even I have a seven year old son and he could do something. And I just feel like I, I just fly off the handle. And she's like, I don't, 
you know, and I, I don't know what to do about it. And I'm like, I'm like, I actually work with a lot of clients about that. But um, we talked about meditation and everything. And, you know, for her, it was more a matter of could she commit to doing certain things. But, you know, she, it was just interesting because she was like, yeah, she goes, I think that you're right. And then she like brings me back like three of her family members. It was, it was kind of a funny situation after that. But yes, there is, um, there's definitely, um, corresponding reasons our bodies are so it's just a, it's pure intelligence the whole thing so whenever there's something going on you really need to take a look at what your body is actually trying to tell you yes there are other things that we could do alternative and complementary therapies all of those are really really great but when it comes down to what is the reason that's what you really want to take a look at. And usually it's reflective of something that's happening in your life. Either the universe is going to show you something outwardly or your body is going to tell you. Wow, that's fascinating. And I know that there's so much potential for more trainings. Um, in hopes to finish this up, uh, I just want to ask a couple questions about the actual practice of meditation. Um, one, is there a right or wrong way to meditate? And the other, does the position that you're sitting in matter? So the for the first question, is there a right or wrong way? Um, the straightforward answer is no. The only thing that I would say is you know that you know if you're not getting something out of it, if you're just sitting there and just kind of going over your to-do list. So don't just expect where well, I'm just going to sit here and not do anything. And you're just going to focus on what you're going to be doing for the day. Then that's, you're probably not really going to get anything out of it, which is the reason why for those who begin. And this is and probably the reason why I say to do a guided is because that's how I started. So I know what to anticipate. I know what to tell my clients. And then if they ever wanted to do something open-ended, at least they already know what it feels like to be in that space. So there really isn't a right or wrong way because there's so many. There's walking meditations. You know, you could be sitting up. And well, I usually recommend sitting up too, simply because if, it, if you are doing this first thing in the morning, you don't want to fall asleep. Okay. Um, you know, you want to try and, and make it through however long that you're starting with. Now, there are meditations, long, longer ones that I do, where it's like sitting, laying down, and then sitting back up. There is a specific reason, though, having to do with the nervous system for that particular one. That's like a 80, 80 over 80 minutes that I do. So I don't recommend this to anyone in the beginning. But typically you do want to do, do it where you're sitting up. And a lot of this also has to do with the, the pranic tube that's going down the spine, the energy. That, think of it kind of like the hose of energy that's like from the top of your head going down. You want that open to be connected to cosmic energy. And if you're grounding, you know, you want to be... Um, you want to be able to feel like you're grounded or sitting. So if I would only caution if you're new that if you do it laying down, then you might fall asleep. Wonderful. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that we had the chance to do this. This was really um, eye-opening. Your presentation was amazing. I was, I was, I had my journal out. I was ready to take notes and ask questions and I couldn't find anything to ask you a question. <laughs> it was just very detailed, very organized, um, very informative, insightful. So thank you for just taking so much time awesome. and um, investing in us. And this is really amazing. So everyone in the group, you're part of the group. So anyone who wants to reach out to you and learn more, 
um, ask you for that meditation. They can just message you and, and start that yep. conversation. Tell us a little bit about the um, workshop that you have in April, because I definitely think that there's a few women in the group that can benefit from your workshop. Uh -huh. so tell us about that before. Oh my gosh. I'm so, uh, I'm so excited for this. I'm like so incredibly stoked. Okay. So Sunday, April 7, I'm doing an empath workshop. So if you know that you are highly sensitive person, and they, that, of course that's not meant, you know, in a negative way at all. Highly sensitive just basically means that you really, your senses are heightened, okay? You can probably feel other people's energies from across the room, or you just know instantly what they're feeling. If someone is, you know, if someone is sick, so maybe you have the ability to actually feel that. Um, so there are people who, a majority of my clients, and this is, I find this to be very interesting, are empaths. They're empathic. They have a lot of intuitive gifts. And so this is a workshop where I'm basically going to be answering a lot of the common questions that I get on, on energy. So some of, some of what you heard here tonight, I'm going to explain a little bit of, about that in the beginning, but we're going to be talking about um, personal presence, awareness. Uh, we're going to talk about grounding. We're going to talk about um, boundaries. So Oh, the biggest question I get, how do you deal with negative family members and people? So we're going to talk extensively about that because it probably is not what you think. Okay. Cause we always hear about like people draining your energy and energy of vampires and things like this. And, and, you know, not that there isn't, you know, some, you know, I can understand why people think the way that they do about those situations, but this is going to be a way as, great tools that we're going to learn to share um, about boundaries. We're going to talk about in, intuition and intuitive abilities. So four hours on um, Sunday, April 7, 10.30 to 2.30. It is in Dallas at my other location at the Health Collective Suite on off 75. So if you can make it, it'd be awesome. And it's a great deal, 60, 60 bucks only for the four hours and there'll be food. <laughs> So, yeah, so looking forward to this. Great. Well, when you get a chance, um, go ahead and add the link to this event in the uh, Facebook group. I think that would be Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, okay. we'll definitely do. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. And thank you to all, everyone who's watching this on the replay. So I hope you enjoyed it and reach out for any questions. That sounds great. Have a great night and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Everybody. All right.